First and foremost, we want you to know that we believe you. We believe every single one of you. And we're so sorry that you have to walk the same journey as us. Things got weird when Dr. Anderson had me lay on his examination table face up while he removed my undershorts. He donned his exa examination gloves and began an intense rectal examination with one hand while he used his other hand to stimulate my penis. I don't wish to go any further with graphic details, but suffice to say the continued probing, stimulation, and painful testicular examination left me in the state of feeling highly vulnerable and taken advantage of. With admonishment, Dr. Anderson told me that I was too nervous and that I could, should get used to this type of routine examination, especially if I was going to apply for a pilot position at a major airline. It's interesting. Every time I have a conversation, the conversation at some point circles. He further stated that he was going to help me by scheduling further appointments with him so I could get used to pulling down my pants in front of him. He re reiterated the importance of these continued visits, especially at the end of this seemingly eternal and humiliating physical exam. Feel it's very important that None of the line pilots would ever go to Dr. Anderson for their flight physicals. Instead, they went to a good guy in Plymouth, Michigan, and they paid for these flight physicals out of their own pocket. My word about drop your drawers Anderson was out, but seldom discussed within the pilot group. What happened in Ann Arbor is a horror story. And it went on for over 25 years of serial sexual assaults. Don't call me a hero. Because I sat on the truth of my assault for 49 years. And it was only because of the courage of the women, some of whom are here with me today, who came forward as part of the Me Too movement that I decided to sit down and do the thing I do best, right. Achieve my goals on the field and off the field. The university allowed it to continue. They provided him a venue for the assaults, which was his exam room. They gave him a very significant salary and they provided him with a series of subjects that he could take advantage of. I was told that he was gay friendly. I went to see him for a sore throat. And that's when the abuse started. And what happened here was a 30 year lie. The best and brightest of this state, the best and brightest of this state were savaged by Dr. Anderson. And we know people in the university in positions of power knew and did nothing. The discomfort that came along with it is part of the process. And I went to the press because somebody had to. I, I was, it was clear from the months I worked with Detective West that if someone didn't step up and put a name and a face and a very specifically rendered story about their own sexual assault, nothing would motivate the university to do anything. It was not in their best interests.